Hi Shmi, I'm Guys, hello, and wait, that's not quite right, what day is it? Hi guys, I'm Shmi, hello, and welcome back to the channel, where you join me today for a run out with the McLaren Senna. Now generally, I try to drive each of the Shmi mobiles, at least in theory, every two months, to make sure they're in good working mechanical order, but also, of course, to enjoy the driving experiences. But it has now been about two to two and a half months since the last outing with this car, the very first few days of this year, when I took it out for its annual service and of course it is overdue a drive to have the legs stretched. Now embarrassingly it's actually done quite a few outings in now the last nine months or so because of course it had to be repaired, then it's been winter with rubbish weather, then I've been in the US, then I've also been for my tour around Europe when the Geneva Motor Show was cancelled, so it means I can count the number of outings that this car has made in nine months on one hand. We'll go over some of the numbers, I guess a bit of an update as well while taking the car out of what it's been like 15 months in now, over a year or so of ownership of the McLaren Senna and some of the plans that are going to be ahead, which of course aren't going to be exactly as we initially expected they might be. We can touch on what I know at this stage, of course, the video isn't going to be going out for a while after I'm actually filming it, so things might have changed, but for the time being, let's hop on board the Senna, get it out, go find some countryside roads, it's a glorious day outside, and go and enjoy driving this fantastic machine. This car in this parking space looks absolutely ridiculous. It is easy to forget quite how insanely brutal the design of the Senna is. Every part of the bodywork with aggressive aerodynamics and a gigantic picnic table for the spoiler at the rear, a car that is designed for the track. Now the observant viewers amongst you guys might notice that amusingly, there is something I have just told you which is not strictly true. The last proper outing was two and a half months ago, but of course the last time I drove it was actually last night to bring the car back from the storage towards my garage here at home where we will now take it out for an extended drive. Of course it's built for the racetrack and I did have a few amazing outings with this thing earlier on in my ownership. I had two days at the circuit of Spa-Francorchamps, the F1 circuit out in Belgium with Pure McLaren. I also drove it on the Nürburgring GP track back to back with the Ford GT and then also this Senna, my car, not even a factory car, was the first McLaren Senna to drive a lap of the famous Nürburgring Nordschleife or the Green Hell, which was just an amazing experience with this level of power. The thing is though, it is such a raw driving experience that out on the roads, it's almost a little bit too intense. It does kind of change the way that you can actually use this car, because you have to shout at your passengers, just like you'll hear me having to shout when I've got the cameras rolling inside. You hear every single stone and pebble. Of course, it's wearing the sticky Trofeo R tires. They throw everything up, which bounces through the bodywork, through the aero. You hear it on the carbon fiber cage the tub that it has built in within you hear every single sound, which is all part of the amazing driving experience, but you're definitely very, very, very conscious and aware of it. For the moment though, let's climb on in, which again is a bit of a mission in its own right, with the key, which has the carbon on the back to match the satin blue carbon on the exterior. Double press that, pop open the door, open them up, lots of drama, which is exactly what you like in a car like this. Of course, the screen unfolds as well. The center seats, I really like them when you're in them, but they're very hard to climb into. As a bit of an update, you do kind of have to step over this edge which being quite so thin does kind of dig in so you have a bit of a technique to this I go one foot in and then just kind of swing and somehow find my way into the car where you can see we have 1573 miles which is not as many as I actually thought that I was going to drive with this thing start it or at least turn on the power with the button up top wakes up the screen to be honest I thought by this point it would have done substantially more but that's where we're at anyway let's fire it into life experience. Let's head now though for a quick little run out. Let's go be reminded what it's all about. The thing with driving in this car is that it is so massively powerful. If you are anywhere near the red line when you're accelerating, you are vastly exceeding the speed limit. It is that level of quick. If I press the active dynamics panel though to go into the sportier driving mode, to go manual, to start dropping some of the gears, you are aware of how missile is and like I say short shifting because you can't go 
quickly, but also take a listen. There aren't exactly lots of stones on this road, but you hear all of them. It feels like you're driving down a gravel track. The other thing though is the rawness of it. You feel every single bump or dip or rivet in the tarmac coming back through the seat, through your bum, but also through the steering wheel, very aware of exactly what the car is doing. And then when you do put your foot down and shift, you get some of those cracks, but you also get the sounds of the air being sucked in through the roof snorkel over your head, which is quite an awesome noise, as well as the turbos, just all of the different sounds going on all around you. Everything culminates to this unbelievably crazy and poor experience. And I often say out of the cars that I'm lucky to have in the garage, if you want to take one for a drive, just a single one time, maybe one hour drive, purely for the experience, it's going to be this every time. It's not great to live with, it's not great to daily drive in the slightest, but for a one-off driving experience, there's not much out there that can wear a number plate that feels like this. The craziest thing to me is I feel almost like I'm reviewing a car that isn't mine, but somehow, somehow, this thing is. So thank you to all of you for the support that makes all of this possible. This is pinch moment every time. Honestly, it's crazy to me. This car is absolutely insane. I need to drive it more. I mean, I'm remembering right now those days driving it in anger on the racetracks. What a thing. Of course, it is not exactly the first time that I've driven my own car, but I tell you, it sure does feel like it due to quite how extreme this thing is. I mean, just look at it. The sun's just popped behind a cloud, but in all its MSO cerulean blue glory with the satin navy carbon fiber, it is so phenomenally exciting each and every time to get behind the wheel. And I tell you what else is exciting. For this week, I've joined up with BOTB to be part of their YouTuber week, where I've chosen to add to their weekly competition a Shmi 150 edition red Ford Focus RS. Now one of you could be winning. They have a guaranteed winner every Sunday night with the winner being surprised on the Tuesday. There are actually over 150 cars to play for, but this week they have a 20% discount on tickets for the Shmi 150 edition red RS at just £2.30. Other cars begin from 85 pence. The competition is open to everybody from around the world who is over 16 years of age. Tell you what, it would be exciting if one of you won a red RS. Back to this though, what a car, what a crazy driving experience, and look, also filling up with stones and the front splitter. In fact, whenever you reverse, it throws the stones backwards through the aero, and you can see um, it's not even raining. How's it getting dirty? I don't know, just driving through a puddle at some point. It's actually quite a hard car to keep clean. That's one of the things I would say as an update general point, is that you can't keep this thing clean because you get stones and bits and pieces thrown up all around it. And even just trying to clean inside the diffuser, for example, you can't reach, you can't get in there, you can't easily do it. So yes, I guess it always will show signs that it's been used and driven. But at the end of the day, that is what it is technically supposed to be for. As well as the fact that quite frankly, this car is pretty uncomfortable to actually drive on a regular basis. There is something else which I haven't really spoken about much, which I would say plays a significant factor in the fact that I haven't really driven it, which is of course what happened last summer. The incident in July and the fact that although it was purely cosmetic and some body panels that needed replacing and repairing, it still meant that the car was off the roads for about five months, which of course is always on the back of my mind. If something happened, I ate road stick coming the other way, if something happened, that is potentially going to be repeated. And it gives me, it gives me a bit of stress, I'm not gonna lie. The value of the car, how difficult it is to repair, how special it is, is always on the back of my mind. Of course, the insurance is huge for this car, as you would expect as well, given the value of the performance. So it's always, I guess I'm always conscious that I want to drive it for specific occasions, when I actually want to get behind the wheel of it. I don't want to just drive it for the sake of driving it, like I did that fateful day where I was just on the motorway in traffic at about 15, 20 miles per hour and the worst happened. I'm going to pop it back into Active Dynamics though, just because of course, nice road, this has to be enjoyed again. <laughs> so it's, it's a factor, and like I said, I've barely driven it. In fact, I think the car has only done, well now, about 150 miles since that day, nine months ago, which is a bit crazy. It's only done, well, it's only done zero miles effectively, apart from what I've driven it just now, since two and a half months ago. So it's not been seeing the usage I wanted out of it. You know, I wanted to trailer it around behind the G, take it to events across Europe, which of course can't happen now. Things like Easter weekend and the Nürburgring maybe, that kind of stuff. Um, unfortunately, completely written off the cards. Um, we'll have to see what becomes possible later in the year. But I 
don't think it's very likely that this car is going to be, you know, it's not going to be a high miler. I'm lucky to have plenty of other cars to drive and feel a little bit less intimidated and worried about them. I'm not going to say that I would never be worried about a car, of course, special rare cars that I'm lucky to drive and spend time with. You never want anything to happen to them. But I'm especially conscious in the case of this. with a few more miles than we started out with earlier on today. So to open the door, you've got the button just here. You pull that, door opens. You can kind of push it with your elbow to swing that open. You have to give it a good push because obviously it's quite a solid thing. And the other thing to get out that makes it a bit easier is to slide back the seat, but it is still not a dignified car to exit from. You have to hoist yourself up and out of those seats. It does help a bit that the roof panel opens up with the doors, like on the 720S, with having the mono cage, the whole carbon cage that goes entirely around you, which obviously makes it very stiff and also very safe when you're inside. But that is quite an uncomfortable cabin, we could say. It's a very noisy cabin, a very stripped out cabin. There aren't exactly storage buckets everywhere. I keep the instruction manual just here in the middle in case I ever need to look anything up. But other than that, you've got just that rubber mat, a small pouch here to pop the key in uh, if you wish. And of course, I got the Scudoni luggage that fits into that small enclave that you have behind just to turn on the light. So you can see that a little bit better. Um, you have that space currently filled a bit with the harnesses, but we have the three fitted luggage piece uh, set that goes back there. Of course, the blue carbon for the snorkel, one of the extras from MSO that I really like that I actually added to this car when I did the specification. So close it back down. Honestly, I'd love to drive it a lot more, but I think part of what makes it such a special driving experience is that I don't do it all that often. It means when I do take it out, each time I'm like I was earlier today, just mind blown by how epic it is as a car, as a raw driving experience, that whole race car for road thing. If you drove a car like this all the time, that would become normal, as odd as it is to say that. Not normal, but you lose the, se the sense of how spectacular it is, how special it actually is. So I guess that's a bit of an update then from the mileage I've done from the car up to this point. Obviously not loads, not a crazy amount of driving, but miles that I've enjoyed other than the mile on the M25 back in July when this car was supposed to be making its way down to Goodwood but as you can see it is flawless uh, with the work that was done by Chartwell hence one of the reasons why the SLS Black Series went and has been or is up at Chartwell to do the work at this moment as well otherwise it might be that car that is currently parked right here but hopefully it won't be too long before we get to see some results of all of that anyway 
Thank you very much for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to check out BOTB and this week, the YouTuber week, where there's an opportunity maybe for one of you to win a red Shmi 150 edition Focus RS. The link and information is down below if you'd like to find out more about that. For today though, thank you very much for watching as always. And I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.